Now, I know you've authored a lot of books on China's development and, and especially the recent economic development. How do you view China's development? China has its own experience in development. Mm. In the early 1990s, that's really when we, the current takeoff began, 1992, Deng Xiaoping, Southern Trip, and of course the beginning of the real reforms mm. occurred at that time. Um, the IMF, World Bank came in and they promoted a concept called the Washington Consensus. Oh, you mm. must liberalize your currency, you must liberalize your stock market, you must open up the door on everything right away, and you must turn all your state enterprises into, into uh, you know, privatized Private companies. Mm -hmm. And China did not adopt this approach. Mm. It adopted an approach that Deng called crossing the river on the stones one by mm. one. By one. And in a way, many people say China developed its own alternative economic model, one of combining market economics with planning to create a market, but one that has a social foundation mm -hmm. to it. I don't call it a model. I call it a set of experiences. And I think that every country's experiences are different. And we should shatter the model. We should stop talking about models. Mm -hmm. The Washington consensus model that was applied like a cookie cutter around the world led to a lot of economic disasters. The experience of China is unique. It may not be repeatable in other countries. Mm -hmm. It may not be repeatable in China. Mm -hmm. The experience is changing. The conditions are changing. So China forged its own economic path, which I really respect and mm -hmm. admire. But in turn, other countries should study it, should borrow from it, but don't necessarily copy it because right. the conditions are right. always different. Each mm -hmm. culture is different. Each people are different. The last three years since China's opening up, at the same time, well, as you're saying this, um, China has lifted more people beyond the poverty level than any other country at any other certain, in any other certain period of time. Are you kind of looking past those sorts of improvements as well? And those improvements I, I, I recognize, and I, mm. I think I was very um, happy and proud to be part of mm. the economic reforms that occurred from particularly the well, I was here in the early 1980s, bringing foreign investment into China right. was a very important part of lifting people out of poverty. Mm -hmm. Some 60 to 70 percent of all of China's exports come from foreign investment mm -hmm. enterprises, which would gives China its large foreign exchange base today. And in turn, during the 1990s, I was involved as a government advisor. I was involved on the forefront of state-owned enterprise reform. So I was very much a part of that. Mm -hmm. And I think this is very, very essential. Mm -hmm. But we have to look beyond it. We can't mm -hmm. sit here and say we're successful today and we will be successful tomorrow because of it. We mm -hmm. have to find what takes us the next step mm -hmm. forward. So that's why in 1992 I, I, I decided to, to drop everything I was doing and go look for the spiritual side mm -hmm. of China, the cultural side of China, the roots. Because there was nothing more I could do on the economic side. China has great economists. Mm -hmm. China's got some of the best economists in the world. It doesn't mm -hmm. need economic advice from anybody. Mm. But what we need to do is we need to look beyond what we have and look at what we're losing, what we're about to lose or what's already been lost right. and try and bring it back. Because the past, the root, if you cut off the root, there's no leaves on the tree. You don't have a new tree. You don't have a new sapling. Mm. Every culture needs its own root its own identity. That's as important as economic development. Well, you have the economic development first. You need to lift people out of poverty. You need to address medical care. You need to address the factors of social stability. Right. But you can't deny or forget about the right. core where part of from. who you are, where sure. you're from. Sure. That's all. I'm just looking for that things. Right. right. Now, you know, you were, you've been here for 30 years. And um, being in China when you came, you've also been able to reap some economic and financial wealth. How much of this has been a result of timing? How do you think your businesses would have done if maybe 10, 15 years later? I think everything also has to do with timing. You're spot on. You know, I came to China when it was just beginning to develop. Mm. I remember that um, when I first arrived here, the only imported goods were in the friendship store. Mm. I'll never forget I bought a Coke with one U.S. dollar, and my teachers at Nankai University were, were appalled. Shocked. They were yes. shocked. <laughs> you know, you spend so much money for a Coke. You, you know, foreigners are very, you know, wasteful, very right. luxurious. And of course, this was the beginning of the mm. transformation of my own values. Mm. And so, with this transformation, you know, I've already been part of the economic development here. 
for me, it's been a great opportunity. Mm. And uh, in turn, it also allows me to have a set of experiences that I hope to share with other people, mm. not only in China, but outside of China. Mm. And in turn, much of what's happening in America right now with the financial crisis is a time to reflect on our own assumptions mm. of the Washington consensus and maybe turn to the experiences of other countries to rethink our own values and in turn reform global values. Uh, you're absolutely right about that. I think a lot of people that I'm talking to in the U.S. all of a sudden because of the financial crisis, it's no longer you know, this machine where all we're doing is making money and, and, and aim towards material wealth. It's like, hold on one second. What happened? You know, look around. What happened? You know, what happened to this world that we were building? And just, mm. I was watching the news report this morning, and they were talking, and all these analysts were, were analyzing Obama's reform package and mm. saying, well, you're you know, spending so much money reforming health care, trying to reform the economy, trying to do all of this at once and also worry about the environment. Isn't it too much? And the reality is just what you talked about, timing. There's a mm. crisis and there's an opportunity. The words for crisis in China is danger and opportunity mm -hmm. combined. Mm -hmm. There's danger, there's opportunity. So here is an opportunity to reform. And this is what China went through in the 1990s. I mean, it was a major reform from an entirely state-planned economy. And to make that reform work and bring us where we are today, it meant reforming not only state-owned enterprises, reforming health care, reforming the grain supply mm -hmm. system, reforming prices, mm -hmm. reforming the banking system, the finance system, the insurance system. All of this had to be done at once right. and within a very short period of time. And so in a way, we have more to learn from each other. Mm -hmm. I don't care whether it's socialist, capitalist, American, Chinese, we've got, we're all connected. And this goes back to the fundamental ideas of Shangri-La or Shambhala. We are all connected. Everybody is connected. Mm. We all come from the same source. We need to be working together and not working apart. Right, right. And we all have experiences that we could share with each other and that we could learn from each other.